Welcome back to another episode of the Scarlet and Gray Report podcast. Um, this is going to be another short episode, and I promise this isn't going to be a daily thing. It's just kind of when we started this thing, a lot has been happening. And let's. Uh, so I just got back um, from interviews with the Ohio State's eleven early enrollees and two transfers, and I kind of want. I, I put. Uh, some stuff on the message board, some takeaways um, from those three hours of meetings and interviews. Uh, but I kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit more of my reactions here, uh, just a short time and kind of four or five, just kind of spitball takes, takeaways, things of that sort, because I think that's incredibly important um, here as we get into uh, preparing for the spring. Um, so Again, I had talked to some of these guys before, um, but uh, getting them in this kind of setting was very, very interesting. So I'm going to start with, you know, Captain Buckeye. We're going to start with CJ Hicks. Um, and I think, I mean, first of all, he kind of dropped the um, idea um, that he would be moving. He wouldn't be in consideration for that uh, Leo spot in uh, Jim Knowles's uh defense um, that he brought from uh, from Oklahoma State, but instead he would be primarily playing the will spots for Ohio, Ohio State next year uh, when he sees the field. But the interesting thing is, and I, he kind of dropped this hint as he was talking that, and we'll get into this a little bit later because I find this incredibly interesting, that uh, Caden Curry, defensive end out of Greenwood, Indiana, would be the guy for uh, the Leo position, probably not right away. There's other names for that, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But um, in, in the future, which honestly, if you look at that kid, it'll be fascinating. But let's focus on CJ Hicks for right now. Um, so one of the things that I was most focused on, and I, I'm really just fascinated with when I talk to, each time I talk to CJ Hicks, is just the kind of reputation he's gained um, about his for lack of a better term, Captain Buckeye persona. So he, from the moment he committed to Ohio State, like two years ago, um, he was kind of the face of this class, the guy who was kind of building everything up, um, leading the charge to uh, such a huge recruiting class and, 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 and uh, something that he wanted to build up. It was his hometown team, things of that sort. When you ask him about it now, so now that he's actually in the program, so to him, it's just actually a nickname. It's, and, and I asked him about this. He said, yeah, it's just a nickname for me. But for Ohio State, when they hear the name Captain Buckeye, it's huge. It's it's a big deal around the program. And, it, and there's a lot of weight. And it's a weight that C.J. Hicks seems to be embracing already, um, saying that the pressure turns into diamonds or pressure makes diamonds, which in this case, I think, I mean, he's already embracing it. He's already taking charge of what that could mean for Ohio State moving forward, which, I mean, for a kid, I mean, when I talked to him just a few times, I mean, he's an incredibly mature kid. He knows what he's doing when he's um, talking. I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine that he's just um, 18 uh, years old, um, very, very young, um, but he's very, very mature. He knows what he's doing. So we'll see what he can do on the field and how well he adapts to the college game, which I mean, getting here early, it's just kind of a indication that he's learning, he's learning fast. And uh, one more thing about CJ Hicks, uh, when Gabe Powers was asked about CJ Hicks and in his relationship with him, he was, he was just, uh, he was quick to say, and it was, it became very, very simple to him. And it was, we're finally brothers, we're finally together. And I think that relationship has been something that we've been watching over the course of their recruitment, their long recruitment with Ohio State, um, just sticking together, building that class together. And now um, Ohio State gets the chance to see uh, that product come to fruition. So let's move on uh, to George Fitzpatrick. So George Fitzpatrick, it's interesting to see because we, we have viewed him or I have viewed him as this kind of project piece and a guy that has been kind of, he, he'll be built up into an Ohio State tackle, which he has been already. I mean, he's coming in at 283. Um, they want him at 295 by the spring, um, but he's only been playing offensive line 
for a very short amount of time. I mean, he's a converted tight end. The guy in high in high school in Colorado behind, that was in front of him at tight end was is now a starter uh, at Texas. So he really didn't have a future there. So they moved him to tackle um, and kind of started to build him up from there. Now, it'll be interesting to see where that takes him. We didn't know. It was my first time talking with George. It'll be interesting to see just how the college level and what that transition continues to look like, because it looks like it's still a learning process. But he's really, I mean, he's kind of latched on uh, to the best here. I mean, he's been um, hanging with Luke Whipler. He views him as the main example in that room right now. So we'll see, we'll see where that takes him. But um, he's already relatively close with Justin Fry. He got Justin Fry's attention when he was at UCLA, you know, having a couple phone calls with him, getting recruited by him. Um, and when he came for Greg Stadrava, which he said was super surprising, I mean, they already had a relationship, uh, him and Justin Fry. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, uh, Diamante Trainum, um, fascinating, fascinating stuff here. And, and we're going to get way more into this. So this is just kind of um, just quick fires, kind of what I put on the board, but I kind of wanted to give you uh, more of my kind of uh, voice and opinion in this because it's kind of hard to do that in message board form, uh, form. But my goodness, this kid is an interesting story. Coming from Arizona State, he was looked at as both a running back and a linebacker out of high school in Akron. And it, it came down to Ohio State and Arizona State. And he just didn't want to give up the ball. He didn't want to give up the chance to be a running back at the next level, even though a lot of people viewed him as a better linebacker. So he was a very, very good running back at Arizona State, but he wanted to be closer to home. So with that, he, he moved to um, Ohio State. They said, okay, you're going to be a linebacker here. And it was something that he, he embraced immediately um, when Ryan Day, Al Washington, and Tony Alford um, introduced that idea to him. So it'll be interesting. He doesn't know which linebacker spot he's going to play yet, but it's something he's working towards, working on the fundamentals, working on uh, you know going downhill, things like that, things that are incredibly important for a uh, linebacker. I, I, based on his size, I don't know. I don't think it would be that um, Leo hybrid. I would expect the will. I think it's a little bit too much to expect for uh, a guy in his position to um, kind of become the Mike uh, just because of the um, amount of responsibility that middle linebacker spot uh, takes. So expect him at the will. Um, that's just my opinion at this point. There's no kind of basis for that, but I would say expect him at the will come the fall. Um, Caden Curry. Holy smokes. <laughs> I mean, we, we got to know him a little bit here at Rivals just based on um, me meeting him as he recruited or as he committed to Ohio State, talking to him, getting to know his family, getting to know his high school coach. But at the time we were kind of, I mean, he was kind of in that middle pattern. And, 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 and this was interesting to me when I talked to his head coach at um, – at Greenwood High School, um, he he was kind of in that middle spot where he could either be built into kind of a middle um, uh, defensive lineman, so a, a tackle, a nose tackle, like, like he had the body to kind of be built into something, or he could kind of be embraced into that D-end athletic guy on the end, which based on what the way that we saw him today, in the bait and based on what he said he wanted and what the program wanted out of him, he's going to be, he's going to be a defensive end. He's going to be an athletic defensive end. They said he came in at 250 pounds. They say they want him up to 265 um, come the spring. And really, I mean, if, if he's talking about being the Leo, if, which is just for uh, clarity's sake, that's the hybrid position between the linebacker and the defensive end um, that uh, that uh, Jim Knowles is bringing from his days at Oklahoma State. Um, so if Curry is being talked about in the Leo spot, hold on to your horses, folks, because this guy has potential and Ohio State sees that immediately. Um, and especially when he's talking about that he wants to be like Nick Bosa, I mean, this guy can do, I mean, based on his size and based on the way they're thinking about him, how they're coming in, um, you know, 
uh, Ryan Day in his early signing day press conference saying this kid is a three year player. I mean, that's high, high praise, even if he wasn't as highly ranked as some of the other kids. I mean, he, he's not, he may not be here long, especially if he sees the field early in that Leo spot. And if they're talking about him in that Leo spot now, I mean, expect to see him on the field in the fall. Um, we're not going to get through everybody. You can read uh, this through on our message board and we're going to write. I'm going to write and we're going to talk and, and we're going to have so much more information for you guys here in the next week and coming weeks and heading into spring. Um, I did want to talk about uh, Devin Brown. Um, and then we'll, uh, so let's go into Devin Brown because he seems incredibly Ryan Day ish. <laughs> and, and I think what I mean by that is he's kind of the prototypical junkie for an offense. And, and it's super interesting because he said the thing that got him, the thing that made him gravitate toward Ryan Day and the Ohio State offense was the binder, the binder of quarterback play, the things that he's expected to know as a quarterback at Ohio State, they showed him what it would be like. And maybe it was a little bit of an exaggeration here. I'm not sure. I've never seen this book, but they, he said it was like this thick. It was huge. And for a kid, a high school kid to see that and not get like, holy crap, like I have to learn all, like instead of that, he was like, holy crap, I'm ecstatic. The attention to detail here is like impeccable. Like it's, it's, it's on the dot. Like, this is what I need to do. This is why I need to be here. That and his relationship with Ryan day, huge. And that's why he's here. That's why he's in Columbus. That's what he wants to do. Some pretty, pretty funny um, <laughs> interactions talking about him as a freshman being five foot eight, um, calling himself gangly, um, getting offered by Wisconsin as a freshman with his dad saying, are you sure? <laughs> he's, he's a very, very charismatic kid. And he said he's been working a lot with Kyle McCord, uh, being his main teacher and coach while the coaches have been out recruiting. That relationship will be incredibly interesting, especially if him and McCord battle uh, for that starting spot into 2023, depending on the status of CJ Straub. But at this point, especially after what he did this past season, I mean, you have to expect uh, Straub is in his final year here. So it'll be interesting to see how that relationship between Kyle McCord and Devin Brown progresses over the next year. Um, but very, very charismatic kid and one that Ohio State um, is going, it, it really loves and you're going to have to keep your eye on because he is a very, very, very uh, mature kid and um, is a leader. And one more thing about Devin Brown, I, was, I actually almost forgot about this. And, and this is the thing that you guys are going to love most is when he, he views himself and carries himself in the same way as Joe Burrow. And when you ask him, which I find this incredibly interesting because, I mean, I was, I was around when, when I was in college and I covered this team. Um, I mean, I was, I was there in the days of Burrow and in the transfer and, and all of that too, um, heading into 2018 with Dwayne Haskins. And he said he views himself in the same way. And when he thinks of Joe Burrow, he thinks of him as an Ohio State quarterback, kind of developing from that system and then going off. Okay, now, to be frank, like um, Devin Brown is not talking um, about going off. It's just the way that he, Joe Burrow carries himself. That's what he sees in himself. Uh, the confidence, the nonchalant, the cockiness, or not cockiness, but kind of this, you know, low, like nonchalant arrogance where it's just this, you know, yeah, I'm good. Um, and, and he's smart and he's, and he's has a lot of personality. And that's what, Devin Brown wants to be. And I think Ohio State, if, if he becomes that guy and can perform like that guy thinks he can, watch out. Watch out. He's going to be, he's going to be a fun one to watch. And then I'm going to go into one more. And, and, and there, again, there's going to be plenty of content to read and there's plenty of content to go to go through here later on. Um, but I want to talk Tanner McAllister and, and the reason why, and I put this uh, quote on the board as well, uh, which First of all, if you're not subscribed, uh, please do it because there's a lot of good information on here. But I'm going to read this quote to you of what um, Tanner McAllister, a former um, Oklahoma State uh, cover safety, um, and then he's going to play the same role here at Ohio State. Um, 
let's see. Uh, this is what he describes as Jim Knowles' defense. He said it's going to be aggressive. He likes to play aggressive call, aggressive calls. He kind of likes to be an offensive coordinator on defense. A lot of defenses like to react to what offenses do. I think Coach Knowles wants them to react to what we like to do. That's what I like about it. We're going to get in their face. We're going to send pressure. We're going to have fun in the back end. I think he just likes to cause confusion, and he does a good job with that causing confusion for the quarterback. That's Jim Knowles. And if you're, if you're Ohio State, watch out, because that's going to be a fun thing to watch. And, and, and one of the things that Tanner McAllister said, he said, heading into his transfer, and while he was in the portal, he was looking at Ohio State film and watching just film, like just watching replays of Ohio State games, he saw the talent was there. He saw, he didn't see a lack of something that Jim, De Jim Knowles couldn't deal with. It was something he was like, yeah, this is something that can be done because I've done it before, which is going to be incredibly interesting to see how that develops with him at the helm and kind of what he can bring. Um, and, and, and because he is the teacher and he was a teacher at Oklahoma State out in the defensive backfield, he expects to be that same coach uh, for Ohio State here in the coming months heading into the screen, uh, spring. And, and really, I mean, at this point, those are kind of my instant reactions. Those are the biggest takeaways. And we're going to talk so much more about this in the coming days. But until then, please uh, follow us on Twitter. My handle is at Colin Gay 17. There's at um, we are at Ohio ST underscore rivals on Twitter. Subscribe, uh, get a subscription, get on the board. Let's start talking about this because there is a lot to talk about. And until then, I'll see you guys on the board.